I'm in the big leagues. Told him don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston. Hey. Oh, oh my god, ow. That hurt pretty bad. <laughs> ah, so you think that you belong on a Chaos 155 boost. I don't know about that. I guess you're gonna have to watch this video to find out because it is rowdy. Put a smile on my face the entire day, made me laugh under my helmet, and just astonished me with what it can do. So. All right, guys, it's BC back with another video, baby. Yeah. All right, today we are going to talk about a long term review of the Polaris Chaos Matrix slash Boost 155. I think that's it. Um, we're going to go over is this sled for you? We're going to go over the pros, the cons, durability, reliability, everything that you need to know to make a decision on whether you should ride the sled or not. So I want to jump right into it. I want to start by saying this. It is a chaos 155 boost. So keep that in mind with everything that I say. I'm not talking about pros. I'm not talking about NAs. I'm talking about the 155 chaos boost. So I got the sled in February, last February. I have over a thousand miles on it now. So I think I'm pretty qualified to talk about it now. I've rode uh, a Gen 4 Ski Doo Turbo quite a bit. I've rode an Alpha quite a bit. I've rode a Stock Slash 850 quite a bit. So I have a pretty good idea of what's on the market and how this sled stacks up to, to the rest of the competition. Um, I'm not an expert, this is my opinion, and if you don't like it, then that's fine. So, I wanna start by saying this. I have rode this sled at high elevation. I've rode it at lower elevation. Probably my lowest elevation is like 6,000 feet. I haven't spent much time there at all, but I know what it feels like. Um, up to, I think I've been, to 10.5 to 10.7, so just under 11,000 feet in elevation. I've been in the deepest snow you can imagine. I've been in rock hard snow. I've been through it all because we have a great winter this year and we were basically riding spring conditions last year, so I have a pretty good idea. I've rode it in a lot of different situations and a lot of different situations. So um, I want to start off by addressing reliability i know for a lot of people even going to the whole polaris brand right now is kind of scary due to reliability i think most people will agree that they perform well um i mean if you're a ski do guy maybe you think ski do's perform a little better i but everyone can agree that uh polaris is right up there with the top performers in the industry there's not very many others but they're up there so it let's start by talking about reliability um to begin i had one problem in a thousand miles and it wasn't a very big problem what had happened was i got stuck i had to get a shovel out and i shoveled the front end out we flipped it over and we sat there and talked for a while and when i went to go get out I hit the gas and like black smoke came out and I could smell the belt was burning. So I cracked the side panel and the belt was just way loose. And these have automatic belt deflection setters. So I was like, what the heck's going on? So I took the belt off. I looked at it, looked fine. I put it back on and I still couldn't get it to tighten. So then I pulled the snowmobile out of the snow, got the track out of the snow and hit the gas and the clutches popped back and everything worked. I took it to a Polaris dealer and uh, they said everything looks fine. They pulled the clut apart the clutches, everything looked good. And so they said they've seen that on a couple of sleds, but that's really not that big of a deal. So other than that, I really haven't had a problem at all. So I would consider this sled reliable, at least the sled that I was on. My brother has the same snowmobile and he had a few problems. He had the stereotypical quick drive belt blow, then he had the fuel pump problem and all the problems that everyone was having. But on my sled, I never had any of those. So that was great, knock on wood. Um, uh, we didn't, or I didn't, even burn through one belt 
in a thousand miles and i wrote this thing really hard if you guys follow us on instagram you know that i'm not really easy on these sleds i put them through the paces and really see what they got so this thing was pretty impressive with the automatic belt deflection i think that increases belt life especially for people that don't know what proper belt tension is supposed to look like so i was very impressed with that um going on to durability my axis the thing that i had the biggest problem with on my axis is it seemed like everything in the front end would break i would break a arms on re-entries i would break um spindles i would break shocks everything and maybe i'm just a better rider now than i was back then which isn't saying much but i never broke anything on this snowmobile I, literally nothing i didn't do anything to the tunnel didn't do anything i have a, a neck on the front bumper but other than that everything is fine um and then like a little knob on the 7s display everything else is fine so um overall durability i have to give this this sled a 10 out of 10 and like i said i know a lot of people didn't have that experience i'm speaking from my opinion and uh not like a hateful attitude of these things suck truly i did not have one problem with this thing other than the little belt problem um so going on i want to talk about something that i think is a big deal that is a 7s display so when I first got the 7S, I'm like, it's kind of gimmicky. Like, I don't need it, but I do like tech and all the latest and greatest technology, so I'm going to get it. And uh, I can't say enough good things about this thing. I would have a hard time buying a Polaris if I didn't get the 7S. In fact, unless I was just going for like an ultra, ultra lightweight build, I would only by the 7s display it is awesome being able to see somebody on the map when you're riding trees when they're stuck when they're trapped under the snowmobile it, just from a safety standpoint getting out of places the 7s is so so cool and it has a bunch of cool different features like when you get it, it has a break-in bar it shows how far through breaking i mean that's not that groundbreaking but it'll talk about or it'll show you temperatures trip odometers uh where exactly you have been um on the map from five rides ago you can drop waypoints say you see a really cool feature and you want to come back and film it the next day you can drop a waypoint there's just really cool things and like i said my favorite part of it is that i can see my brother that to me is just peace of mind i don't have to radio him all the time when he's riding i can just look on the display and say okay he's coming around the corner uh, so it's super, super cool. 10 out of 10. I had a little bit of a GPS problem. It was not accurate. It was like a mile off, but it fixed itself pretty quick. So I have to say good things about the 7S. Don't count on it to get you out of everything, but it's definitely a cool feature to have. So I will be sticking with 7S until they come out with something even better. All right, guys. So now we're going to go into the performance of the sled. This is what I think about the snowmobile when I'm riding it, when I'm putting it through the trees, when I'm, you know, doing re-entries, little jumps, stuff like that. So let's start with the chassis. The biggest and most crazy part about the snowmobile is has to be the slash tunnel. For what I do when I'm trying to be like Kasturki and do re-entries, bow ties, you know, downhill hop over, stuff like that the slash tunnel is so so nice to have and not only that if you're a tree rider it makes a big difference when you're on a steep slope and you're side hilling you know coming from a normal tunnel when you feel or i guess the real thing is you don't feel anything behind you but when you're used to feeling that tunnel drag in the snow and then you hop on a matrix slash and you literally don't feel anything behind you in the snow it is like like, holy cow, this is insane. Like, I, it's more capable. I can carry more speed. And not only that, I can stop and then start again and not wash out and have the track dig as much. With the 55 boost, you can imagine that the track digs quite a bit. Um, but the slash is so cool. Wheeling, it gets dangerous because that thing will come over you really, really quick. I've mouse trapped myself about 800 times on this thing. Um, but for the moves and for doing everything, wheelies, trees, I mean, just everything. It is so cool. 
an issue that I figured would happen with this thing without a flap with the cut tunnel and the slash tunnel, the taper tunnel, sorry. I would I thought that we I would be facing overheating problems all the time. To get to our riding zones, there is a lot of trail, unfortunately. Um, well, in most of the spots we go, there's like 10 miles of trail. And this snowmobile cools itself very, very well. They move that cooler up towards the seat. And I don't think I had, I think it actually stayed cooler than, uh, than my Axis. It was pretty impressive. Um, so the slash is super cool. While we're talking about the chassis, I want to talk about the chaos rail. So is the chaos rail set up for you? I think everyone thinks it's for them, but I don't think it's for probably 75% of the guys out there. I think most people want to do crazy stuff, but I think that they'd be better off with a pro chassis. I think the chaos rails throw in a wrench when it comes to predictability when it comes into the preciseness of the snowmobile i think why a lot of guys ride players is because of the preciseness and being able to shoot you know a line stay on edge everything stays square um so i think the chaos takes a little bit of that away i'm willing to sacrifice the ra the preciseness and everything for ski lift and that's what this chaos rails are made to do but uh personally i don't think a lot of people should be on a chaos because it can get out of control quick, especially with the 55 boost. So the chaos rails definitely add a fun factor. Um, and it like it's like exponentially crazy when you have boost, a slash tunnel, and chaos rails. It's like a recipe for a mousetrap. But in reality, that's what we're trying to we're not trying to mousetrap ourselves, but we're trying to get that lift, get the skis out of the air to be able to maneuver it in the air. And, uh, and this snowball does a really, really, really good job of that. For me, when it comes to steep, gnarly side hills, like I said, the slash tunnel is a big deal. Another thing that I've found that I feel, I don't know the statistics of how wide the snowball is, it feels considerably narrower than, the, than an axis on side hills. I feel like I don't panel out and slide out near as easily on the matrix than I do or that I did on an axis. So it's super impressive in that regard. You can get all the way down and the track's still in the snow. You're not high centered on your panel sliding, which I do appreciate. Uh, that that basically means very little washout. Uh, with the Chaos Rails, it wants to go up. And so you can wash out kind of that way, but it doesn't, when you're cutting a line this way, it doesn't want to fall down like, like a lot of snowmobiles do. Um, going in, going away from the, from the, uh, chassis and going into the engine performance, it is very strong. This boost is not near what like a aftermarket boondocker kit is like a, an av gas kit. I was running a sidekick pump gas kit and this, this feels weaker to be honest, but I would rather have the matrix chassis with lower amounts of boost than an axis chassis with high boost. I just think it's a better chassis. It's it's just great. With the Walker Evans shocks and the chaos rails in the tunnel, it's awesome. So um, the engine strong, the boost comes in later than, considerably later from what I feel than what like a ski, a Gen 4 Ski-Doo um, turbo comes in. The, Skidoo has a way better lower end in my opinion, but for me, it's not that big of a deal. I know I could fix this pretty easily with like a gear down kit and messing with some stuff, um, but it's just not that big of a deal to me because I like to be in the high RPMs and, and ride it more aggressively. Um, what is this sled good at overall? It's good at moves. It's good at re-entries. It's good at wheelies, bow ties, jumping. It's good at all that. The suspension's great. Um, the suspension is overlooked in my opinion. I had Fox shocks on my axis. These, I, I'm not going to say they're as good as Fox shocks, but coming from the factory, they are very, 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 very good. And, and I enjoyed them. I adjusted them a tiny bit and left them and, and we're super happy with it. All right guys. So what is this sled bad at? This sled is bad at a couple things. 
because you're getting such a rowdy, fun, flickable, light in the front sled, you're going to have to sacrifice some things. And what you're sacrificing, like I said earlier, is predictability and preciseness. This snowmobile wants to be all over the place. It wants to have skis in the air, waving like you. they just don't care. No, I'm kidding. Um, but they want to, it wants to be rowdy. And that, that's set up is that's what it's made to do it's made to be rowdy it's made to pop wheel it's made to do all that so if you are a guy that wants to ride trees that wants to have a precise snowmobile you would be a ding dong to buy this snowmobile because that's not what this thing's made for that's like buying a sports car and then trying to haul a trailer with it you're buying the wrong snowmobile for the wrong for the wrong purpose so it's not good at anything that you want to be very, very precise in. Uh, what I mean by precise is skis on the ground, being able to point and shoot, and having that snowmobile stay in the snow to be able to provide traction with the skis on the ground. Um, it's not great at that. It's great at being rowdy. Is this snowmobile for you? I believe that this snowmobile is for less people than most people think. I think everyone thinks they belong on a 155 Chaos Boost, and I personally don't think that's the case. I think most people would do better on a Pro because this snowmobile is for an ultra aggressive rider that has experience, that wants to have the rowdiest machine on the mountain. If you're going to go bang meadows and you're going to go like ride trails, then obviously anyone could be on any snowmobile. You could have a, a, an Avgas kit with a 137 track and be fine if you're going to do that. I'm talking about actually riding the mountain, getting in the steep stuff, getting in drainages. This sled needs to be rode by someone that is ultra aggressive and experienced and has the fundamentals down because this snowmobile is a handful. You need to be well rested. You need to be on the, you know, leaned over the front of the snowmobile. You need you need to just know what you're doing to ride the snowmobile. Guys that don't know what they're doing, get a pro. Get I mean, you shouldn't even be on boost in the first place if you have no idea what you're doing. But get something like a pro that's more precise, that's easier to ride. But if you're the guy that wants to go out there and make Instagram highlights and go absolutely crazy, I don't think there's a better sled on the market yet. All right, guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, as always, I'll, I'd like to talk about it. Follow us on Cook Bros. Give me a subscribe, baby. We're pumping content this winter for you. Anything that you want to see, leave in the comments. I'll make a video. And uh, if this sled's for you, good luck and have a lot of fun because this thing is insane.